Well, I was going to save this for tomorrow. Go watch my other video from today. But with news, you kind of got to be on the pulse about stuff. And this is a story that's definitely been picking up a lot of steam on YouTube, a lot of steam on the social medias. So we're just going to talk about it. And I'm going to give my thoughts about this situation because we have yet another report on the Nintendo Switch 2. But this one is a little bit different because we get into actual potential specs of this system. The Taiwanese Economic Forum has now done a write up talking about the Nintendo Switch 2 and actually talks about specifications of the system, such as the screen, how much RAM, how much storage is going to be into the system. So we're just going to talk about what's said in this report, and then I'm going to give my thoughts about it. So basically, one of the things they say is that the retail price of this system will be $400 instead of $300 like the Switch currently is at least for the base model, and that's something that we've been talking about. It more than likely will be a $400 situation. I'm still kind of hopeful for something like $350, but that's just because I'm a cheap person. I understand technological costs, all this sort of stuff. I get it. You know, $400 is quite the investment, but when you've had a system that's been very successful like the Nintendo Switch was, I don't think it's that big of an ask with this. Look at the PlayStation 5 selling very well at $500 and a somewhat questionable software lineup with that, at least when it comes to first party stuff for 2024 and beyond. But hey, you know, people are still buying PlayStation 5s and I think people will still buy Nintendo Switch systems because more than likely they've been cooking some stuff. You know, they've been they've been making some games. When you look at the output of games for 2024, smaller projects, remakes, remasters, that sort of stuff that you normally see at the end of a system's life cycle. But where things get very interesting is they give sort of a release window for this system and then some specs of the system. So first off, they say that it will be launching in the second half of the year or it's likely to launch in the second half of the year. I think we can all sort of agree on that. There is no January Nintendo Switch 2 event. Everyone who said that just should go in a corner and you know, try to learn, try to learn from their mistakes and try to learn from their follies by sort of believing that. And then we get into the actual specs of the system. So the first thing we're going to talk about is that according to the Taiwanese Economic Forum, that this system will have a screen refresh rate of 120 hertz, which that's a good thing. You know, if you know anything about screen refresh rates and stuff like that, the higher the better usually with this. My monitor um, that I'm using to record this is 120 hertz. The Asus ROG Ally also has a 120 hertz screen. And I still think that ROG Ally screen is really good. I never got a Steam Deck OLED model because I didn't really see the need for it. I understand that OLED screens can look better than an LCD screen, but it all sort of comes down to what sort of screen they're going to be using as far as LCD screens are concerned with the Switch 2. I think we're all kind of under the assumption that it is going to be an LCD screen, but an LCD screen with 120 hertz uh, refresh rate, you know, that's sort of something like an Asus ROG Ally. So I think that would be awesome. You know, I, I love the screen on my ROG Ally. So if that is indeed what they are planning to use with this system, I think that's awesome. Then we get into some more specs and 64 gigs of storage. Now, if that's the case, if the Taiwanese Economic Forum is indeed right on 64 gigs of storage, that's ridiculous. That's just ridiculous to me because you need more storage than that. We're talking about games that are, you know, exceeding 32 gigs regularly on the standard Nintendo Switch system. Why can't you give me, you know, 400? You know, I'm, I'm not going to ask for a, a, a ton. Give me three to 400 gigs. The, the flash memory is so cheap right now. And I understand there's going to be people in the comment section. Well, if it's 64 gigs, it's not that big of a deal. You could just buy an SD card. We're assuming that it will use micro SD cards, much like the Nintendo Switch system does now, which I get it. 
and that storage medium is indeed cheap but there still needs to be more onboard storage than 64 gigs because that that's if you're planning on having these third-party games call of duty like i get it they don't optimize these games the same way that nintendo usually does but nintendo themselves are starting to make bigger games look at tears of the kingdom it's the largest file size for a nintendo switch game if we want games to keep going in that sort of direction where the production values are higher and the games themselves are bigger i'm gonna need more storage space on this bad boy so i don't really care for that and then one of the big things is that this will be using nvidia's t239 processor and feature eight gigabytes of ram that's what a lot of people are hung up on right now is the eight gigabytes of ram because when you look at ram on other systems and other platforms we just talked about something like the steam deck we just talked about something like the rog ally that has 16 gigabytes of ram eight gigabytes of ram that's more akin to something like a playstation 4. so people are thinking well this is already potentially going to be outdated at the end of the day when this system comes out in potentially the second half of 2024 but that's kind of in line with i think what a lot of people are expecting like playstation 4 on the go like i think that's what people are are thinking that this nintendo switch 2 was going to be i mean that's something you know the to be at the level of a playstation 5 to be at the level of an xbox series x in terms of raw power i i don't think that was ever on the table for a hybrid nature system which is what we assume that this system is going to be when you have eight gigs of ram but you have things like dlss upscaling which is also something we are assuming is going to be in this next system it's not going to be a one-to-one -one with the playstation 4 that artificial intelligence upscaling things will allow for things and games to look and run better than they would natively on an eight gigs on the playstation 4 so i i think as long as this does have some upscaling technology, which a lot of us are assuming, and that 120 hertz refresh rate of a screen also leads me to believe because a lot of these switch games that we have right now, they're not running anywhere near that. They're running at, you know, 30 frames. I think it's a decent balance. You know, people get so hung up on the raw numbers and the raw horsepower, and I get it. But if this is indeed the case, I don't think it is it is time to panic and you know get worried about that eight gigs of RAM. As long as something is supplementing that eight gigs of RAM, the system itself I feel will be fine and still be a viable platform. Won't feel you know like a gener a full generation behind or something like that, and could potentially do things that weren't possible on the PlayStation 4. But even if you look at the PlayStation 4's like most impressive games, The Last of Us 2, Final Fantasy 7 Remake in terms of graphics, like imagine that kind of on the go. Like is that a is that a bad thing inherently? We do have to keep in mind though that the Taiwanese Economic Forum, you know, they're not exactly the most credible place in the world. They're not exactly, you know, always accurate, but you know, you know it's something it's something worth talking about they're putting their reputation on the line with this sort of thing so i think it's interesting i'm not going to say that i necessarily believe all of this because why of all places would they have the inside scoop on that but it is kind of in line with some things that we have been hearing and honestly if this was sort of the end result if this was what we ended up getting with the nintendo switch 2 as long as there is some sort of artificial upscaling that coincides along with it i don't think it's doom and gloom i i don't think it's the end of the world and i think that it's more so what developers do with that power i mean when you even when you look at the switch itself like look at a game like super mario odyssey or the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom and then look at a game like king kong or, or, or kong skull island or wwe 2k18 it really comes down to what the developers are able to do and how easily accessible tools are to work on the system but i just wanted to talk about this with you guys because that's gaining steam i know two videos in one day i i spoil you like it was this your christmas it's your your three kings day i think three kings day 
coming up soon. I remember one time for Three Kings Day, because uh, my Puerto Rican aunt got me a um a what was it? It was a third party N64 controller. And like that was cooler than anything I had gotten at Christmas. So I was like, yeah, Three Kings Day, what's up? Let me know what you think of all this in the comment section down below, though. Do you think this would be a wise move for Nintendo to keep costs down with this? Do you think that this is something that is kind of a bit of a mistake? And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. Make sure you check out the video from earlier today. We talk about PlayStation 5 and Nintendo Switch potentially getting more Xbox games. That's a whole nother story. But I felt like this story was different enough that I can make two videos in the same day and as always guys make sure you subscribe and i'll catch you guys on the next video later